Hello everyone, I'm here to present the Precaution Adoption Process Model, PAPM prepared by Kristen White, Dorothy Suko, and Amanda Penton. Here's an infographic showing a breakdown of a PMPM. PMPM is a psychologically focused model that is most useful in describing how a person comes to a new decision and how that person can take the decision and make it become an action. This infographic uh, includes a brief history breakdown of the stages and an example of using a PMPM model. We will discuss each of these in greater detail throughout the presentation. The Precaution Adoption Process Model, or a PMPM, is a state theory which seeks to address and identify the qualitative reasons a person comes to a decision to take action, as well as how that decision is translated into action. This approach to explaining health behavior offers several benefits, including the possibility of a greater accuracy, greater innovation effectiveness, and greater innovation efficiency. There are four principal elements to a stage theory, defined stages with boundaries for separation, ordered stages, citing and typical flow, a user text throughout the model, common barriers to change that link individuals in each stage, as well as barriers separating individuals existing in different stages. The PMPM was first recorded being discussed in 1977 by Arvin Janis and Leon Mann. Later proposals were presented in 1988 with the final formulation coming to be in 1992, which is the same formulation as is used today. Within the precaution adoption process model, there exist seven stages an individual moves throughout. In the first stage, a person is unaware of an issue existence. From here, a person moves into stage two, where they are aware of an issue's existence and may formulate their own opinions, but are not engaged with the issue. Stage one, and two are primarily driven and affected by the media and their portal, uh, portrayal of any specific issues. Next, a person moves into stage three where they are now aware and engaged of an issue, but undecided of, um, on if they will act. From here, they can move to stage four, not acting, or stage five where they will choose to act. Should one choose not to act and enter stage 4, they will finish their path within the model. The decision to enter stage 4 or 5 is primarily driven by one's belief regarding the severity and risk behind an issue, susceptibility, precaution effectiveness, and perceived social norms. Should an individual enter stage 5 and choose to act, they will then move into stage 6 where they are actively acting on the issue within the stage. PMPM suggests that while detailed implementation information is uninteresting to those in early stages, it is pertinent information to those who have decided to act in stage 6. Finally, an individual enters stage 7, a maintenance stage, while stage 6 involves a one-time action stage. Stage 7 focuses more on repeated and sustained action to address an issue. An individual can move for both forward and backwards within the model and there is no defined period of time an individual must remain in any individual stage. PMPM is utilized to develop and evaluate behavior change interventions. To implement this, there are five steps that can be followed to achieve success. The first step is the process uh, and this process is to identify and define a behavior of interest. PMPM focuses on the adoption of specific health behaviors such as cholesterol testing or broader health behaviors such as increasing exercise. Once the health behavior is defined, the second step is to classify individual based on the current stage in the PMPM model. This classification can uh, then be applied to the target population being evaluated. Third, an understanding must be gained on the factors that influence transition between the different stages of the PMPM. This knowledge will help guide innovation strategies and help focus on recommendation to increase adoption of new behaviors. The fourth step involves addressing the variables associated with the different stage transitions. Moving from one stage to the next may involve the need for increasing knowledge of skills and innovation should be prepared to address any barriers an individual faces in moving forward in the PMPM process. Lastly, evaluation process need to be prepared to determine how to evaluate effectiveness of the program and a time frame determined to follow up assessment. This review will allow for increased understanding of the PMPM process and make any need needed changes for increased success in future implementations. 
The primary construct of the precaution adoption process model is unrealistic optimism. This is underestimation of the risk due to underestimation of strategies others use to protect themselves and stereotyping others perceiving, perceived at higher risk. Health educators can normalize risk by comparing standards to an absolute and normative standards or the risk of others. Unrealistic optimism is part of the personalizing risk consciousness, raising specifying consequences of the risk, using probability descriptions and scenario-based risk information to decrease underestimation of risk. The second construct of the PMPM is perceived susceptibility. This has to do with the perception of risk and ties into realistic optimism. Perceived susceptibility ties into stage two, aware but not thought, uh, not thought to act. And three, weighing pros and cons, considering precautions. The individual is thinking about change and the susceptibility to risk is formed by communication with others and personal experience to the hazard. Risk information is showing promise in combination with behavior recommendation to motivate the individual to act and acquire the skills to do so. This further encourage promote, uh, promoting awareness related to risk and outcome expectation. Minor study evaluated the perception of protective uh, technologies to decrease the halt in utilization and adoption of safe working practices. 21 minors and 19 managers were interviewed. The interview revealed that um, targeting stage 3 and decided to act is most important to promote progression to stage 5 while avoiding stage 4, deciding not to act. It also showed that managerial staff need to seize assuming minors understanding perceived risk and provide communication, education, and training around risk-based strategies to timely and adequately incorporate safety technology. For example, those in stage 3 were frustrated with technology and those in stage 4 did not like the inconvenience of new technology and stage 5 appreciated the benefit of technology and were used to using it already with technology tailoring messages to what stage the individual is and can highly influence the workers movement between early stages. This can help organizational management to utilize PMPM to understand how to tailor messages about protective technology, provide skill based training and raise awareness to encourage the adoption of safe practices. This second case study was the first time the precaution adoption process model was used in adolescent population and utilized in assessing risk reduction in cyberbullying. The model was used to evaluate adolescents' self-protective behavior to secure their electronic environments and also seek to explain adolescents' lack of precaution throughout the concept of domestic bias. Uh, evidence is mounting that cyberbullying is rising. In 7th grade, 68% of students acknowledge cyberbullying as a serious problem and 69% says it is a serious or worse than in-person bullying. Optimistic bias is the belief that bad things happen to other people. Of the participants in the study, 7-16% to were in stage 1, unaware of a problem. Half of the participants were in stage 2, aware of the problem but not thinking to act. And, to per and no participants were in stage 5 decided to act but not yet acted. Any student that took protection, uh, protective action blocked abusive behavior or reported abuse ended up stopping using uh, social media. As adolescents progress through the stages, optimistic bias diminishes. This research tells us anti-bullying program need to focus more on critical thinking to assist students in advancing from stage two to understand the evidence dangers of cyberbullying and connect with resources in the community. Real world examples, Crisis Center North Prevention Education Program integrated optimistic bias into their curriculum and noted short and long-term reduction in perception bias. Some of the benefits of the PMPM is the ability to promote risk-reducing behaviors whereby people take precautionary action to reduce the perceived risk and positive outcome expectances, which increase as individual moves up to stages of the model. The identified drawbacks of this model are the model tend to focus on a single threat or preventive response. Also, there are uh, transitions barriers such as cost, time, and energy that can cause difficulties to move people from one stage to the next. Referring to the construct of perceived susceptibility, the PMPM was able to assess the distribution of intervention stages and help mine workers to move from stage 2 to 7 of acceptance of the new preventive technology. In addition, 
in addition, their use of PMPM evaluated the different perception of mine workers towards the new technologies and the acknowledgement of individual perceptions. The PM stage theory suggests that there is a variation of behavior when moving people from stage to stage, which can be a barrier to the transition process. Also, protection measures related factors such as time, money, and skills required to implement this stage model usually interfere on individuals' decision not to act protectively. An alternative to the theory of precaution adoption process is protective motivational theory, which explains that people protect themselves based on two factors. Threat appraisal, which explains the severity of a problem, and coping appraisal, which explains how people respond to a situation. The PMT represents as usual social cognitive model of individuals' motivation to engage in protective behavior. PMT could be applied to the studies such as minor study to provide education to the individual workers about the new mind safety and health technology. And this ends our presentation. Thank you.